so uh, finished my master of nutrition also so i definitely have a plan to integrate both sciences together and to benefit my clients or my students with both sciences so um, in ayurveda essential nutrition uh, mostly we uh, we focus on the very basic theories and um, very important components like you know how to uh, know about doshas vata pitta kapha how to know about our prakriti how to know about the importance of various six taste and how we can incorporate all these six taste to increase overall nutritional value of our food we also learned about you know how to use the various utensils whether uh, using various metals or whether using specific types of uh, cookware can contribute or can affect the overall nature of the food so yeah it is a very wonderful interaction in both ayurveda essential and advanced course and one step ahead for ayurveda advanced course we uh, learn about uh, various home remedies and how food can create various diseases and what types of food you need to eat in specific diseases uh, that we are going to see in ayurveda advanced uh, nutrition um i can go talking but uh, i would definitely like if you have any questions or if you want to ask me something so that you know our conversation will go on otherwise uh, or from yeah. if you want yeah. to ask me anything yes so uh, if any one of you wants to kind of ask rupali ji a question please raise your hands and i will uh, unmute yeah. you so, there is question from kumar ji uh, he is asking how do we know if we have kapha pitta or vata body yeah exactly we start from understanding our prakriti so i think in the very first uh, class in ayurveda essential nutrition this is what we talk about that what are the vata features what are the pitta features what are the uh, kapha features and how to uh, you know self assess your prakriti how to know your prakriti so we'll definitely uh, learn in ayurveda essential course but to let you know that there are various properties for example you know vata has dry properties so overall vata person will be lean he will talk fast he will walk fast he will think fast and kapha is exactly opposite the vata uh, they talk slow they walk slow their actions are slow their decisions are slow but firm and pitta is always you know uh, uh, very sharp intelligent quick responses uh, intolerance to heat uh, the same way kapha likes heat vata likes heat so there are very interesting uh, properties of all these dosha and uh, in the first class of ayurveda essential nutrition uh, i teach to self assess your prakriti so that you will be able to know which food will favor you or which lifestyle modalities will help you to keep your balance doshas in balanced state i hope it answers your question kumar ji and overall it is a very interesting journey you know when when you know about your prakriti then you understand okay oh that's why i have typical inclination towards this particular food oh my kapha is the reason i don't like sticky food but i like dry food or i like little bit pungent and hot nature food etc so oh, this is very interesting journey and i'm very sure that you will come to know very unique uh, theories from ayurveda for example many of you must be heard of that ayurveda typically discourages you from mixing few things together uh, the famous example is always everyone knows that fruits and milk together or you know, meat and milk together etc so this is not mere combination of food but this is a very scientific concept in ayurveda which is called as viruddhara or incompatible food combination so this incompatibility of food is related to leaky gut it is related to allergies it is related to skin diseases so basically um, i always say that you know uh, nutrition is it, it's not just cooking right it's not just uh, mixing very tasty things together or very nutritious things together and making an exotic dish and all but nutrition or cooking culinary skills they are a pure science and you need to understand some rules some do's and don'ts in your everyday cooking 
so basically this course will be your guide in your uh, daily ayurveda cooking uh, techniques or practices and definitely it will change your perspective to look towards the food items etc now uh, while teaching the incompatibility food complex we also talked about various research papers you know is there any scientific backing or support for these ancient theories and how we can dress or non communicable diseases like you know diabetes obesity they are suddenly increasing why because our lifestyle has changed a lot we are stressed a lot our food habits have changed a lot uh, our environmental factors are impacting a lot so togetherly they are contributing in all these non infective diseases you know these are not cured by uh, some antibiotics or some uh, antivirals etc because they are not infective diseases your own body is creating those diseases so we'll also talk about various factors you know how gut health is important what is gut health whether ayurveda talks about gut health how you can understand your gut health how you can uh, diagnose yourself whether your gut health is okay or not how simple spices simple herbs or simple apathya food atoms will help you in uh, improve your own gut health so all these important topics we will talk in both courses uh, in essential courses we will mainly focus on you know understanding the concept of these theories and advanced courses we will talk about cases we'll talk about some home remedies we'll talk about some therapeutic diet so advanced course will be a, a one step ahead of uh, ayurveda essential nutrition course and everybody is welcome to join these courses because uh, 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 you know nutrition food everybody loves food so i think everyone will be interested to know more about food uh, for ayurveda advance there are prerequisites either you should be aware of all these ayurveda or yoga concept or you should have uh, at least taken ayurveda essential course or any other ayurveda related course from hua for ayurveda essential nutrition you are welcome to join any time Thank you, Rupali ji. This was a question that many students ask. If you know, a, a kind of uh, some basic knowledge of Ayurveda is required to join the advanced nutrition. So, is it like as you answered, but just for clarity's sake? So, any it's not really required that they start with essential nutrition. If they have some initiation into Ayurveda, they can uh, go ahead and take your oh, uh, advanced okay. nutrition. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Sure. Thank you. And we have two, three more questions, Rupaliji, mm -hmm. if you would want to take them. Sure. Um, so Vijay ji is asking, any solution for neuropathy? Absolutely, Vijay ji, because, uh, you know, now conventional dietetics is praising a lot about vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, and how fat is important because our brain is nothing but a dense uh, combination of fat and other neurons. So even the myelin sheath which covers the neuron is made up of 100% of fat. So when there was a period where everybody was avoiding oil and ghee, Ayurveda was the only science who was promoting good oil and uh, cow ghee, etc. So definitely we will talk about uh, various neuropathies. In fact, most of the neuropathies are interestingly related to the gut issues. So it starts from your gut, it starts from your digestive system, and then it, it can reflect on either cardiovascular system, heart or skin or uh, various neuropathies. And we also have, it's an anonymous attendee. If I don't know anything about Ayurveda, what can you say that will compel me to take this course? Oh, that's a wonderful question. I like this question because if I just want to improve my, uh, you know, uh, if, if, if I just want to bring some positive change in my lifestyle and in my diet, trust me, Ayurveda Essential Nutrition will be the first step you should join. Because as I already mentioned that we start from the basic concepts of Ayurveda. You know, we, we don't go deep very deep into that because uh, you know whatever concepts which are very close to nutrition that we are going to start with so even if you have no idea about ayurveda you will definitely uh, take uh, uh, valuable knowledge and valuable inputs which you can directly apply in your day-to-day -day life so it is not just theoretical course 
but uh, students ask so many questions they share so many experiences and it's a very wonderful experience to interact with all of you and to you know um, uh, especially there are various myths about food items nutritional uh, nutrients and ayurveda so this course will be uh, uh, very valuable to start with even if you are not aware of any ayurveda related things and uh, thank you rupali ji for that and chitranjan ji wants to know what do you think about grains like grains let's monocotyledons is flour more uh, harmful than the whole grain okay that that is also a very good question so uh, uh, flour is the very uh, common way to you know uh, consume the whole grains right flour is the most closest natural form of whole grains so how to use them is very important and you will be very amazed to know that every grain has different properties you know even they are uh, what do you say uh, botanically they are from the same species or same family or they have same traits physical traits they are nutrients i will say if, even if they are having similar nutrients according to ayurveda they have different natures and they have different um, Uh, impacts on your bodily tissues and on your health for example um, rice wheat millets they all have specific impacts on various doshas so there is one class in ayurveda essential nutrition where you actually learn about the properties of milk properties of grain properties of curd properties of ghee properties of meat whether goat meat what does it uh, uh, i mean what are the properties so every food classes properties uh, are being discussed in that ayurveda essential class in fact saraka has dedicated a very elaborate um, uh, portion uh, in charaka samhita to address various food classes their properties and how to incorporate those properties to get the maximum benefit from those food classes and i think two more questions from pali ji sure. will we learn about hair loss hair loss is very closely associated with the nutrient imbalance hormonal imbalance uh, your gut dysbiosis or any digestive disorders in fact um, this is a very i like this question because this is not a simple complaint uh, raji raji ji is coming with but in second or third class we will be learning about various tissues like blood skin bone muscles and how you can actually choose various food items to benefit particular tissue so when we are talking about bone tissues which is called as asti dhatu in ayurveda so definitely uh, hair and bone tissues are interdependent uh, with each other because hair are supposed to be the by product of bone tissue according to ayurveda so whenever there are any bone problems joint problems or any nutritional errors even if you are taking proper uh, vitamin d and calcium then also there can be hair loss because of hormonal imbalance so we will be definitely talking about hair loss in uh, this course and we have uh, one more from abhishek ji you now we've got two more questions three more questions now but still uh we will take uh, abhishek ji abhishek ji saying i think you would be, you would want to read this rupali ji this is directly abhishek ji okay namaskar vidya rupali ji appreciate you using the appropriate sanskritam uh honorific title ati uttam <laughs> question re ashwagandha is it based in ayurveda ashwagandha yes absolutely ashwagandha belongs to ayurveda it is a vata shamana herb and uh, uh, ashwagandha is one of the most researched herb for the for its application or as nutraceutical so nutraceutical is nothing but therapeutic uh, use of food atom so there will be various um, ashwagandha is covered in many chapters in both courses so you will be definitely going to learn very much more about ashwagandha then we have how much is the intro course what all will it cover 
So the uh, course fee I can answer. Course fee would be three hundred dollars, and uh, essential nutrition. Arupaliji has already spoken about, but Arupaliji, you can again, if you want, you can just give them a brief uh, about the essential nutrition. So yeah, Ayurveda essential nutrition and advanced nutrition both I think uh, are the same, three hundred dollars. Uh, and there is one more question: Are both courses being offered in spring? No. The uh, okay, so we are offering uh, advanced course immediately in the summer for some uh, in summer spring. Semester. Sorry, yeah. In spring, yeah. Sorry. And spring. essential, if you offer it, will be in summer. Yeah, it will be in that summer. Is yes. I, Uh, then Rajiji has again uh, one question. <laughs> yeah, regarding Tripala, Tripala dominates Ayurveda uh, field definitely. Uh, so th thoughts on Tripala, Tripala. Trust me, I'll I can give you, you an answer in a single line, and I can talk about Tripala for next three hours together because there are some vaidyas in India. There are some uh, very experienced Ayurveda doctors all over in the world. Not only India, uh, they can practice only on Tripala. Whatever is the disease, one can practice only on Trifala. You just have to know the proper property, body constitution. You just have to diagnose the disease properly. And various forms of Trifala can be used from hair to toe. Like uh, either Trifala decoction, Trifala powder, fresh Trifala, or uh, Trifala, uh, uh, you know, uh, Trifala ghee. So there are so many modalities we can use Trifala as uh, ingredient. Trifala can be anti-aging, Trifala can be immunomodulation, Trifala can be just a simple herb for constipation, Trifala can uh, bring your gut dysbiosis to normal, Trifala can be uh, hair tonic, Trifala can be anti-acne. So you are going to learn very, very, very uh, many more things about Trifala in course. Another question. Okay. Uh, do you use or suggest any book for this course? This is Krishan Chabra. Yes, Krishnanji, definitely. I recommend few books uh, for these, uh, these courses and we uh, provide you proper links to buy them. Uh, one of them is my own book, Food Guru, which I have written uh, three years ago. And um, it definitely is parallel with the syllabus of the course content. It has uh, all the Ayurveda nutritional theories um, uh, in one section. Second section, more than 130 easy Ayurvedic recipes, which you can incorporate immediately into your lifestyle, uh, into your day-to-day -day cooking after reading the book. And third section of the book talks about all the Ayurvedic properties and conventional nutritional profile of all the food items that you usually use day-to-day -day for day-to-day -day cooking. So for every class, we will be providing you reading links, uh, some videos, and few uh, book recommendations also. So of course, uh, the reliable and the needed resources will be provided. Uh, Damodar ji is asking, is Ayurveda compatible with a vegan way of eating and living? He embraced veganism 31 years ago as an ethical imperative for life. That's a wonderful question. And that's the beauty of Ayurveda nutrition, Damodar ji, because it not, it, uh, unlike the conventional nutrition science, which only talks about calories, which only talks about, you know, uh, oh, you are not eating meat, that means you're... Uh, vitamin b is not going to fulfill your iron levels might get affected but no uh, even if you are vegan if and you want to keep your tridosha in balance uh, you want your veganism uh, in aligned with the health and aligned with the balanced dosha uh, you sh you should definitely learn about ayurveda nutritional theories because uh, if you know the various properties according to ayurveda you know, you are vegan and if you are using almond milk or if you are using soy milk and you are not aware of the properties uh, because the soy milk in a group of eight people, uh, four people will be okay with the soy milk, but two people will may have bloating or upset stomach due to the soy milk. Uh, another person may have, uh, you know, any allergic reaction to even soy milk also. 
So if you understand all the properties of these food atoms, you can definitely choose the food atom very uh, carefully so that uh, whatever path you have chosen, the veganism path, it should be aligned with your Tridosha balance and Ayurveda theories. Uh, Ayurveda inputs will help you a lot to uh, properly incorporate all these food atoms and get a balanced thali of your vegan diet. And now we also have... Uh... Look at this, I can take uh, Rupali ji. Can you share a write-up on what will be covered and when is the next intro course? Uh, this I can share with all of you, uh, whoever, you know, has registered for the webinar. Um, the next course, unless Rupali ji gives us a date, we'll not know, but hopefully it will be summer. So concrete date, we do not know yet, but we will definitely give you what all is uh, be covered in both our courses, Essential and Advanced Nutrition, uh, in a follow-up email to all of you. And uh, another question was, I just sent her the link uh, about how long will the course be? Mm -hmm. So... 11 weeks. It yeah, will be 11, 11 weeks. weeks. The exact dates are in the link uh, for the course. Um, that also you all will get the complete information. And should we... Another uh, question, should we combine salt with any dairy product like curd, paneer, etc.? <laughs> okay, that's a very, very specific question, but I would like to uh, give the answer for that question also. If you are asking specifically for curd, rock salt and curd is a very good combination to uh, use. And of course, there are some, there are five rules how you can use the curd in your day-to-day -day life, but I'll keep it to my sense, because it is my favorite topic to talk uh, in the class. So how you can use uh, curd in five ways so that it will not generate any allergies or any, you know, kapha or any uh, health issues. So, but yeah, um, curd and rock salt can be consumed together. And paneer is a very vast topic. And uh, I think I uh, covered paneer as a separate uh, class. So I'll keep it because there are various do's and don'ts regarding paneer. And in today's webinar, we cannot cover all. By the way, paneer is mentioned in Ayurveda. You will be surprised to know that there is a very beautiful Sanskrit word for paneer. Even cheese is mentioned in Ayurveda. So you are going to learn very, very unique things uh, in this in this course. And we have Rajiji again asking, I don't have much knowledge about Ayurveda. Will I be able to absorb the advanced course or better to take basic course first in the summer? Okay. So uh, Rajiji, thanks for bringing this question. If you don't know anything about Ayurveda or uh, so definitely it will be better to start with Ayurveda essential nutrition. But if you know a little bit about Ayurveda or you have taken, uh, you know, you are from any um, biology background or yoga, etc., then you can directly go for uh, advanced course. And I, I would like to mention one more thing here because many, uh, many people are concerned about the use of Ayurvedic terms, Sanskrit, etc. So don't worry, uh, you will not be bombarded with very complex terms or complex theories, but it will be a very uh, light learning with lots of knowledge. And uh, we have Sojanya Ji asking, I understand that Ayurveda is a huge subject in itself. So after finishing both the Ayurvedic Nutrition 1 and 2 courses, what could we term ourselves as? Would, be, would there be any next Ayur advanced courses after the Ayur Ayurvedic Nutrition 2 course? Okay, okay. Thank you for asking, Janya Ji. So basically, uh, you must be knowing that in HUA, we are trying to, um, you know, uh, make a program uh, exclusively for Ayurveda. So Ayurveda Essential, Ayurveda Advanced Nutrition, these are the basic steps. But uh, we are coming with more Ayurveda courses. And if you are taking these courses, this credit will be considered. And uh, of course, they will be carried for your certification in particular uh, uh, course in Ayurveda. In Ayurvedic program. And yes. for all of you, um, we also, I have Rupali Ji is just back from our first HUA's first in-person retreat, which was, which was an Ayurveda retreat. 
any like anything you would want to share about that Rupali ji yes absolutely we had we yeah. had a very wonderful retreat in pine lake retreat orlando my city and i uh, i i got an opportunity to meet my various uh, students from my class both classes even previous batches students and uh, we did um, uh, i mean full time two day yoga chakra healing ayurveda nutrition various demonstrations were done so uh, of course this was also part of course this retreat was a course and uh, we offered um, credit for this retreat also so it is also a course so absolutely you will be getting diverse courses which you can take and uh, uh, add into your uh, certification program yes we will be coming up with more courses more such retreats you know like the entire ayurveda experience we are definitely going to expand at edgeway okay we have a few more questions and before we take any further question rupali ji any person, you know, any of your student uh, who's here today, if they would want to uh, say anything about your course, about, you know, want to share their experience, uh, you're welcome. Please raise your hands and I'll unmute you. Okay. Uh, uh, if you like to say anything, you were in the retreat. She write. She wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sojan, Sojanya, you were also in the class, right? Ayurveda Essential Nutrition. Are you there, Sojanya? Is this the same Sojanya? I'm not sure. <laughs> and we have uh, another question. Rupali, these teas compatible with Ayurvedic diet? You did answer this, right? Yes. Does it have any advantages over a normal Indian vegetarian diet? What is the question? Uh, is cheese compatible with Ayurvedic diet? Okay. Does it have any advantages over a normal Indian vegetarian diet? Absolutely, absolutely. Cheese is mentioned in Ayurveda diet and we are going to learn how to use cheese in a proper way so that it will not be incompatible with other uh, food combinations. And uh, that's the whole concept that, you know... Um, Fruits are nutritious, milk is nutritious, uh, meat is protein rich, nutritious, uh, cheese is nutritious. Still it is, still it can, uh, you know, uh, impact in a bad manner also. So we are going to learn about what are the do's and don'ts so that it will not affect the overall health and it will, we can get maximum benefit from those food items. So about cheese, we are definitely going to learn a lot of things. Okay, I am going to unmute uh, Vandana ji and Sajanya ji. They want to share their feedback. I have unmuted you. Uh, you can unmute yourself, Vandana ji, and speak. Uh, yes, I attended uh, the um, retreat and it was, I really enjoyed it. And uh, Rupali ji he was a great, great teacher. She I learned so much about Ayurveda, which I didn't know. Um, so I will encourage everybody to join the next retreat whenever that happens. And I have not taken any classes. And I was told by a few of the uh, participants, class participants of Rupaliji that she does a great, amazing job. So I will consider taking some courses also. So can everybody hear me? Yes, yes, Vandaji. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for your feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Vandaji. And also, Sajanaji would like to talk. Now, you can unmute yourself, Sajanaji. So, Janaji, you can unmute yourself and you can talk. Hello. Can can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. Yeah. 
yeah so i've attended i've attended this uh, nutrition one course and it was it was a very great experience that i have had uh, rupali ji is, is amazing she's always down to earth and she gives us a lot of info and she's long, she's got a lot of patience to answer every small query that we ask so i've been always endless on my queries uh, so if she cannot answer she also helps us with the response in her emails um and we get to know every question answered like in terms of what kind of oils that we use what kind of powders that we use all cooking questions are being answered so it was really an amazing experience and uh, i feel like it's just just a blessing that we've we've been here and finally found a forum where a lot of lots and lots of questions all your doubts from your childhood using this or that everything is answered yeah i highly recommend um anyone if they are interested to understand their cooking process or the food um, that they are giving to their children yeah highly recommend this course thank you so much sajana ji thank, thank you, you sajana and we have uh, i think we can take a couple of more questions if you want uh, rupali ji uh, i think there are just two uh Okay, one is, can you tell us more about certification? But uh, that we can tell only after it. we have a concrete and a, for, you know, a final certification uh, uh, up on the kind of uh, website. When we have finalized everything, then we'll share it with everyone. We are still in the process of developing and finalizing it. So that would uh, take us maybe, Rupali ji, what do you say? A month or two? We should be um, yes. done. The, you know the entire formulation of the certification so absolutely yeah. will be updated on the website time to time yeah so we will uh, definitely you know all all of you who are interested we will um, definitely share the information once we have all the final uh, details uh, carved out and another one from kumarji are root vegetables allowed in ayurveda how about unfertilized eggs mm -hmm. That's also a good question. There are specific properties mentioned in Ayurveda for root vegetables that how they overall, you know, earth, they they are uh, very closely in contact with earth element, Panchamahabhuta earth. So the food, the growth, if they are grown in Jalamahabhuta, which is water, marshy land or root vegetables, they are very much closely in contact with the earth element. So it does reflect on the properties or on the nutritional um, nature of that food so yes ayurveda does talk about root vegetables and they are a little bit heavy to digest and they can uh, increase um, both interestingly sattva and tamo and rajoguna also but it's how you eat them what sanskara or what cooking techniques you adopt to cook those root vegetables can alter the nature of overall uh, that particular food atom and about unfertilized egg, yes, absolutely egg. The properties of eggs are also mentioned in Ayurveda. But uh, I think by unfertilized egg, you mean, you know, synthetically produced eggs without the natural mating of, right? So obviously such food atoms is supposed to be incompatible in Ayurveda. And uh, definitely they are not going to give you any nutritional values. Uh, one last question, Rupali ji. I think Bhanu Sharma ji would like to, um, he has his hands raised. I will unmute him. Just one last question and then we can yeah. end the webinar once again. Bhanu ji, you have a question? I okay, no. I attend. Yeah, so I will just, uh, really? yeah. I have allowed you to talk, Bhanuji. You can uh, just unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Namaste. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I attended the Essentials of Nutrition last year with Rupali Ji. And uh, I think it has made a big change in how uh, every meal is, uh, you know, uh, looked at, uh, at least at the beginning, um, immediately after we concluded the class but slowly over a period of time I think I know I have kind of gone back to my old habits so eagerly so I have been reading the notes and you know going through all that all over again and I'm I'm in India I attended the course from here and the timing is so convenient and thanks to HUA to also be putting the recordings of all the classes so we are able to revisit and look at them time and again 
uh, I'm really eagerly waiting for the advanced class to begin. Thank you. Thank you, Vanuji. So I, Rupaliji, thank you for this wonderful, you know, I think it's an eye opener for many of uh, us people waiting to get initiated into Ayurveda because yes, as you said, it is that, you know, a roadblock or you say a mind block that many of us have that it will uh, disassociate us from many things that we like and we would not want to leave. But um, I would uh, suggest and I would recommend this course to anyone who would want to make a change to their lives. So I think we have no more questions. So we will be sharing uh, the presentation along with the course details to everyone who has registered for the webinar. And uh, any questions uh, regarding the courses, any questions if you all have, you all can uh, please um, respond to us and we will be able to help you out with anything. Thank you, Rupaliji. Thank, Thank you so you. much, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Namaste. Shubharatri. Good night. Good night. Good night to all of you. Good morning to everyone who's in India and other countries. Namaste. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Namaste.